Last week, just as Storm Eunice was beginning to blow in, uh, we had a man with a digger here for the day uh, doing some <laughs> bits and pieces for us. And one of those things was to dig out some drainage channels uh, in this area. This is the duck field. Um, and we've created some drainage ditches because it's just so wet here. Uh, so in fact there are, there are three here at the moment, there will be a fourth and one goes along horizontally, the second one goes along horizontally and then there's another ditch that joins the two at that end and before too long there will be another one going in that direction to take the water down to the existing ditches to, to take the water off the land altogether. I'm fairly sure in the height of summer it won't be long before I'm moaning to you about how dry it is here <laughs> but for the majority of the year it is very wet and whenever there is rain and it rains right through the summer this field becomes incredibly soggy and indeed the veg garden uh, has already been flooded three or four times so things I'm doing to sort out that flooding is uh, creating a ditch to take the excess water away faster. The raised beds uh, I'm going to fill as deeply as I can and as and when we get the wood to make the, the beds deeper I'll make them deeper and fill them even more to try and lift the plants out of the water. But uh, having these drainage ditches put in means that I just ask them to pile uh, all the soil that they took out uh, right next to the ditches downhill from those ditches and I've started to plant them. So in here uh, I've put in 54 raspberry plants, um, 20, I want to do the maths, 29 of them are uh, Autumn Bliss and then 25 of them a variety called, and I think it's called Ziva, Z-E-V-A. I haven't grown those before so that'll be interesting to see what those are like and if the birds uh, eat all of those then eventually we'll move some of the autumn bliss down here because birds seem to not eat autumn bliss quite so often. In the space between uh, the two horizontal ditches uh, I've started putting in some trees. Yesterday I spent quite a lot of time trying to work out exactly where I wanted uh, the trees to go and I wanted them kind of in a block or in straight lines so that I could uh, mow the grass if I needed to quite easily and I tried doing them going straight down the hill and it just it just didn't feel right so here uh, I'm going much more on contour so in the food forest it's more like straight lines just going north-south here uh, it's going southwest to northeast. Uh, so I've got one, two, three, I've got four going in a diagonal here, and uh, four more going here, and a couple at that end, and a couple over there. So they're very spread out. Um, I have got an awful lot more trees than I've put canes in but I'm going to start off with these and see how this feels. Um, I've, there is actually space between the canes to put another smaller tree. None of these are huge trees, they're all on uh, dwarfing or semi-dwarfing rootstock. Potentially they could be put in much closer together. I'm really quite excited to have started putting these trees in. Um, so I've got uh, three pear trees in, two Williams pears and one conference and um, look how lovely they look. These sticks uh, are for me to put some netting around because as yet this area isn't rabbit proof so I'm just going to put something around here temporarily until I've got that done. Uh, so I've got the three pears in, I've got two cherries in and today I'm going to carry on planting fruit trees in this area. I also asked the man with the digger uh, to move a bit of soil here uh, and put it up on the sides to create potentially a pond. Um, so this is quite near the duck house where the ducks live uh, in the summer and when they're allowed out after the 
uh, threat of avian influenza has passed. And I thought it would be really nice for them to have a bigger pond for them to paddle in. Well, he did that and then it, as he was doing it, it just completely filled up with water and in fact it washed over the edge there and carried on running down the hill so I'm going to need to bank that up a little bit more. But unlike the far end of the food forest where I've put in a wildlife pond, uh, this one doesn't have a very clayey soil and so the water has drained out of it really very quickly. It's very soggy still, I tried walking in it yesterday to remove some of the stones from the base of it um, and very quickly <laughs> felt quite unsafe as I was sort of sinking into the mud. Um, but if we do want a pond here, we're going to have to find uh, a liner to go in it um, because other than when it's raining quite heavily, this is going to drain really fast. If we want it uh, for the ducks to have access to it during the hot weather of the summer, uh, it will need some sort of liner. The liner that we had in the old house was an old butyl liner that we had found lying around on site when we moved in. Now we don't have any sort of liner like that here. Just an ordinary pond liner that you would find uh, for a goldfish pond it just doesn't work uh, for ducks because they've got really quite sharp claws and it just pierces the, the plastic very quickly. So we might have to wait till I've saved up a bit more money because this could potentially be hundreds of pounds. My project with Dave the Hero this week was to uh, start doing this. And this is the shed that I've been putting in at the end of the shady garden. So the camera uh, is actually in the shady garden looking out towards the food forest. And um, what we had to do, I'm saying we, uh, again, that's the royal we because um, very much uh, Dave did the most of this. Uh, he made a wooden frame um, which he set into the ground at that end, but not at that end to compensate for the slope here. Um, and then we put in a weed suppressing membrane to stop weeds growing up through it. And then uh, the bit that I did help with was filling up that frame with stone. We had to put it into a wheelbarrow and cart it across here and fill this up. And that actually almost broke me yesterday. It wasn't the moving it with the wheelbarrow, it was actually just shoveling the, the big chunks of gravel up to put them in the wheelbarrow. It was really jarring on my back, it was really jarring on my arm and my shoulder, my hands. I sound like a moaning mini, I am absolutely moaning about it. It was really hard work and again uh, Dave did the majority of that. Um, I did about five barrow loads and one <laughs> They weren't full burrows, it was just two or three inches of um, stones in the bottom of the barrow because that was about as much as I could move across. But anyway, we got that filled and then he put a little bit of cement uh, in four lines to be able to bed in the base of the shed. Uh, so the shed base is now down. As you can see, uh, it's covered with a tarp to keep that cement dry, give it a chance to, to dry off. Um, and over the next um, few days or possibly the next week, uh, we'll complete putting the shed on here. And then we will have a space to have our composting toilet in. So despite having had uh, so 10 days on and off of stormy weather, we have still managed to get some bits and pieces done. Um, but I think now it's time for a cup of tea. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time.